This is Reasonable Doubt with your hosts, Mark Garrigus and Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on the church, but get on mandate. Get it on and welcome to the best hour or so in the universe. It's Reasonable Doubt. I'm Adam Carolla. It's Mark Garrigus over there. In the in the studio, uh, many people looking very forward to today's episode, Adam. Many people have have tweeted at me, texted me, anxiously awaiting uh, our analysis and reaction to everything this week. Well, this is a subject as far as the uh, votes go. And, you know, so he, here's my general overview of the whole thing. Um, the left talks about voter suppression. That's horseshit. Like, look, if you got to fucking show a license to do something, that's not exactly voter suppression. Like, an do you adult, know, did you vote you in person? Did you yes. vote in person? Okay, did you go vote in La Cunada at yes. that little auditorium? I pulled my license out. Yeah, well, I, I pulled my license out. The guy goes, "No," he said, if, "No, if, you don't need to do that here." I okay. said, "Wow, that's interesting." If if you cannot vote unless you're legally an adult, eighteen or over. If you live in this country in two thousand and almost twenty one, and you're an adult and you do not possess an ID, then you don't participate in this nation. You don't participate. Like I, I'll, I'll just turn the, I'll fucking turn the argument right back at you. If you are forty four years old and you don't have a license or you don't have an ID, ID. then you don't pay taxes and you don't. Part, you, there's no way you could participate <laughs> in this thing called the United States. No, so you that's know. horseshit over there. Now, and then wait, the I rights, wanna, I the wanna, rights uh, horseshit. Okay. Then, then you talked about 18. The most surprising proposition, Gary, I haven't checked it today, but it looked like it went down to defeat in California, was the one that said if you're 17 at the time of the primary, but you turn 18 by the time of the general, there was a proposition to allow you to vote. And yeah, that, Proposition 18. And it didn't pass, right? Uh, no, it Good. was rejected. Well, well, first off, the <laughs> average 33-year-old who lives in California is emotionally 14 years old. <laughs> so you? you take an 18-year-old or a 17-year-old, uh, he's a fucking zygote. <laughs> today. The, not 1944. <laughs> today. So the in California, we're just in such a different land because um, – you saw today, uh, just as I was driving in here, uh, George Gascon I, I was about to have his press conference, but Jackie Lacey um, just conceded uh, and actually cried, I, I, I'm told. I didn't watch it, but cried about the, um, the fact that she was conceding. And it's amazing because she's a African-American female prosecutor, and she lost to the 66-year-old um, George Gascon, who is former LAPD, then San Francisco DA, now the LA County DA. Boy, is that LA County DA's office. I can't even tell you what's about to come. The ideologues in that office, ha- ha- their heads must have exploded. This is going to be a earth shattering, mind blowing uh, event for them. What do you mean by that, the ideologues? There's you know, about 30, 35 years ago, the, well, you know, I used to joke. In fact, I like to think that I had some um, input into you being a former federal prosecutor. I used to talk about the bleach blonde former federal prosecutors that I used to do all of these various shows with. Mm-hmm. And um, it, there was this movement, so to speak, where you weren't a lawyer trying a case, which is what I've always thought you should be in a criminal case. Yes, it's beyond a reasonable doubt. And yes, it's, uh, if it's crime. As a DA or as someone a DA, who works for the prosecutor. DA. Yeah, yeah, a prosecutor, prosecutor, whether it's in a U.S. attorney. But at some point, there, there tended to be kind of what my father used to call true believers. And it was like they're on this noble quest and they're on the white horse and, and uh, the defense is bad and blah, blah, blah. So that was that that gained a lot of momentum. And I would say 10 years ago, if you had predicted George Gascon winning against Jackie Lacey, I think I could have got I could have given out 50 to one odds. Nobody would have taken it. Is it because he's so progressive? Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. And um, and uh, remember that famous Black Lives Matter where her husband came out and her husband's now being right. prosecuted um, for that- holding the gun on uh, at the front door. And it's. 
it's an amazing time we live in. I never, I always talk about the pendulum swinging, but I just wish my old man was around to talk to him about this. He would not have believed this. This would blow his mind. Well, as far as being progressive, and I, I know Gaston kind of fucked up San Francisco now, you know, his work is done there and he's come to <laughs> fuck up LA. But Well, look on the bright side. I saw a picture, was it today? The picture of Biden and Garcetti together, he's already he's already moved on. Yeah. Oh, Garcetti, good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think he's already moved on. I swear. Somebody was saying last week, um, they were telling me, no, he's not going to get the position. He's not going to go to Washington. I said, why? He said, because he's got a guy that got embroiled in a sex scandal, his advisor, right. whatever that guy's name was. I said, that doesn't matter one whit. This right. guy's going to D.C. He's going to be head of HUD. It's – it. It's it's mind numbing to me because uh, I was just I got my parks screwed up when we were talking about uh, MacArthur Park and MacArthur Pershing Park. Square. I keep screwing up uh, the park that what is my park the one Echo I, Park Echo Echo park. park where Dodger Stadium that kind of down the hill from Dodger yeah. Stadium down by the Chavez Ravine yeah, yeah. Echo Park is and nothing that's the one with the paddle it's, boats it's nothing but tents correct it's nothing right. but pitch if you tents. go like I do to downtown. Um, and go over the hill through Dodger Stadium. You take mm-hmm. Stadium Way. That takes you right through there. You get a bird's eye view of uh, everything that's happening. Down this, there. yeah, I think this one's the lake with the pa- yeah. paddle boats. Anyway, all every ounce of green space has a tent pitched on it. And my thing is, is progressive policies fuck up cities fast. Why? How? Why do we need more progress? What? Why do we need? A, a more progressive agenda. That's L.A. got fucked up with a progressive agenda. I, I, why, I, why are we going Gaston? Why don't we go another direction? I'll tell you what's amazing to me is I've, as I've mentioned several times, I have um, many females who work downtown and mm-hmm. two a one, they all want to flee. I mean, two a one. And I, I, they just, they don't feel safe. They, they, they Well, what, they're, what happens if Garcetti, Goes to Washington. Well, I think, isn't the city council president, doesn't she become acting mayor? And then I'm sure there'll be a food fight. Mike Fewer, who's the current city attorney, who, by the way, prosecutes. Um, I, I've talked many a time about his prosecution of marijuana offenses in a dedicated courtroom in East L.A. at the same time that the city is collecting the tax revenue from it. So that he would be a perfect candidate for mayor in the city of L.A. because you, the hypocrisy would run rampant. Um, so sorry. Um, so let's 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 hit the. The election for a second. Okay. I, I was going to. I mean, there's I so many tangents here. I mean, I, 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 I wanted. I, right. I could just. I wanted uh, to finish. Right. By saying the left talks about voter suppression, which doesn't exist. I mean, 100 million or however, 120 million people voted. And by the way, not. ID well, we're is at, not suppression. We're almost at 145. Right oh, 145 million. Yeah. OK, so there's no voter suppression going on. And then the right you know, wants to talk about counting ballots and mail-in ballots and all that kind of stuff. And it seems the prevailing wisdom is if there's several hundred or maybe a few thousand between you and your opponent, then that could be an issue. But it, once you get past 15,000 or 50,000 or 80,000, then how's I, that? I read something the yesterday that, see, for recounts, for instance, Georgia – is if you're less than a half of a percent between the two candidates, that triggers a recount if the aggrieved party wants it. So Georgia looks like it clearly will be a recount. They've come out and said as much this morning. Yeah, they, is it half a percent? I heard it was 1%. I'll look into it, but I can tell you from what I was observing this morning that the state has announced that they will be doing it. So Okay. Well, it's, in- anyway. it's interesting there, too, because one of the other uh, kind of conundrums they've got is uh, the senator, Purdue, who's running against Ossoff, um, has uh, fallen now below 50%, which puts mm-hmm. him into a runoff. Mm-hmm. So um, it'll be interesting to see whether or how far below 50% he is and whether, in fact, um, the runoff or the recount, so to speak, impacts the runoff as well. But as we've overnight, Pennsylvania has come around and they're now uh, they're now calling Pennsylvania for Biden uh, as recently as an hour ago. So- 
Trump really doesn't have a move here, right? No, but, I but, just but don't see will, what he's got. He's, but what will he try? Well, I think one of the things they'll try is they're still hoping for Georgia to do something. They're trying to get a – you know, part of the problem he's got in Pennsylvania, the U.S. Supreme Court kind of called the timeout basically, and it was four to four. And then there was an indication by three of the justices that we'll keep it here basically to see what happens. But the way that Pennsylvania is coming in, the vote is coming in, it does not appear that that is going to help him. And the other thing I was going to mention is um, there's been a lot written about recounts, but I don't, I'm not familiar with any recount that where the margin in uh, is less than 20,000 where it's changed yeah. the result. I don't I don't see a direction here for for Trump especially as these votes are tallied and it's going the wrong direction. Correct. If the votes were tallied and they were moving his direction, then there's a move. But I something I was thinking about on the drive in and I do want to ask you. Um so there's a bunch of stuff going on there with with the FBI and uh, with uh, Steele dossier and 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 all Durham and Mueller and uh, all this all this stuff and all 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 this uh, not Mueller but Durham looking at the stuff and there seems to be ample evidence that the FBI and the powers that be going all the way to Obama. Now I'm not saying Obama did it, but I'm saying Obama possibly was aware of it. I mean, like I said, so let me just set the table with this. I have watched reporters, a couple of, there's two or three reporters have been reporting on this and they've been doing it for about three years and they've not been wrong about anything. So I'm basing it on these couple of reporters I've seen. There seems to be ample evidence that there was an intentional uh, attempt by the FBI and the Obama administration and, and beyond to railroad Trump with the whole steel dossier and Russian collusion and all that stuff. It fucked him up royally. I mean, he literally spent as a four year term. He spent three years of it defending something that didn't exist. I mean, literally a dossier that the FBI themselves said, oh, this is this is hearsay. It's worthless. And they just moved on and they have texts and they have emails and they have testimony. And they, they got a ton of shit. What's if if I'm Trump, I'm like this. This can't just go away. This is my entire presidency. Uh, uh, what's his move now? And what well, I think he, he does do? the same. I uh, I've mentioned this a zillion times, and I know people. It, some people's heads uh, can't uh, get around this, but it, having had a front seat to Whitewater, it reminds me of exactly what they did with Clinton, and so Clinton. Um, I think, and the move by Trump is going to be very Clintonian. I think that you're going to see him position either himself or one of his family members for 2024, just like Clinton kind of basically had Hillary positioned mm-hmm. for the follow-up elections. Because Clinton, yes, was. I mean, I've I had I've had several conversations with him um, about Whitewater phone conversations, Bill. Bill. And he can talk about it for hours. And if you want to talk about somebody who is aggrieved and thinks he his his presidency was tainted by it and impeachment mm-hmm. and everything, he will I mean th- that's the irony of this. He was impeached, Trump was impeached, both of them um feel enormously aggrieved by the process that they what, went through. What is your what are your rights as a civilian? So you were the president. The FBI essentially launched a campaign to uh, get you out of there. Um, it, it ruined your presidency, essentially. Now you're not the president, but we got all this evidence that they did that. As well, a citizen is, now, where do you go? Well, I'll tell you, I, I think he's got much greater peril than that. I think that if you read the tea leaves as to what's going to happen, um, the U.S. Supreme Court – gave a pretty um, good indication that they think that the Manhattan DA's office um, has enough, uh, and it's a criminal investigation, to uh, pursue all of the tax fraud and, in, and basically uh, other kinds of bank fraud. 
if that's the case, even, you know, there's a lot of talk. People keep, I, I keep, at least in the legal journals and legal blogs, about whether he can pardon himself. Remember, pardoning himself for federal crimes, because that's what it would be, is only good for federal authorities. If, for instance, and this is just the for instance, a lot of people have speculated the Southern District of New York um, either could or would uh, indict him in connection with the Michael Cohen case. Well, a pardon would wash that out, um, whether it's him or whether it's orchestrated through Pence if he resigns earlier, something along those lines. That would not wash out the Manhattan DA's office. Manhattan DA's office is, in my opinion, along with the attorney general there, who's already kind of taken aim at his uh, charity, he's got jeopardy there. And uh, he's going to be embroiled in all kinds of things. In addition to that, when the Department of Justice just a couple of weeks ago went to the Southern District in that case um, and tried to substitute themselves in, the judge there, the district court judge, would not let the Department of Justice substitute themselves in. That case um, is not going to go away. He's going to have – he's going to spend the rest of his life – I mean Howard Stern will look like a um, a prophet because Stern always said, why did he want this? Because it's going to end up torturing – he had a good life and it's going to be torture for him for the next – Four years. I wouldn't want to be the guy having to pay all the legal bills he's going to have to be paying. I mean, it's going to be – it's astronomical. And I think there is legitimate criminal jeopardy. Agreed. But that in no way answered my question. Yeah. <laughs> no. uh, what is his – well, because I'll tell you this. Because – if you, you're going to have you these a private curves. citizen, let's if just you're say, a private let's citizen. say you're a private citizen and you got railroaded by the FBI and there was some smoking guns, what would your recourse be? Well, you've heard me rail before about qualified immunity. Um, uh, generally, as long as they get through, if they didn't bring charges, then you have very little remedy unless you could – torture yourself into kind of a Hyde Act situation. But if they did bring charges, then the irony of what happens is they if they find probable cause, you have very little uh, recourse. I mean, if there's probable cause, that kind of insulates um, what But I don't think do. there was probable cause. They no, had there was They had sealed dossier and they said this thing's not worth the paper it's written on. And then they said, well, go forward anyway. Well, so, the interesting thing – when you say there wasn't, there's the you've got the FISA court, and the FISA court, which was one sided, obviously that by design, saying uh, basically we were lied to in 18 different instances. You've got the uh, the inspector general coming through with all of that. Um, what's the remedy for that? Very little. Okay. Very little remedy. But but first, do you know where there is a remedy? Geico. No, where NetSuite. Oh, NetSuite. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> if you're a business owner, you don't need us telling you running a business is tough, right, Adam? No. But you might be making it harder than necessary. Don't let QuickBooks and spreadsheets slow you down. Stop paying for multiple systems that don't give you the info you need when you need it. If you upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle, which, by the way, is the world's number one cloud business system, you get visibility and control over financials. HR, inventory, e-commerce, and more, all in one place instantaneously. Unbelievable. Whether you're doing a million or hundreds of millions in revenue, save time, save money with the world's number one cloud business system, NetSuite. Right, Gary? That's right. Join the over 21,000 companies using NetSuite right now. Let NetSuite show you how they'll benefit your business with a free product tour at netsuite.com slash doubt. Schedule your free product tour right now at netsuite.com slash doubt, netsuite.com slash doubt. So in answer to your question, too, because I've thought about this, if because we've I've had clients in the past and you, the client will say, this is ridiculous. Why do I have to pay a fortune in attorney's fees? For to defend myself when I didn't do anything. It was a right. common refrain. And um, you make the claim against insurance companies, and insurance companies say, no, we define claim as something where somebody's seeking mon monetary relief from you. Mm -hmm. We don't define claim as when the government's coming after you to, to, put, to put you in, unless you write specifically for that coverage, which right. generally you can't. So there's very little remedies. I mean, you could go to trial and win, and then you could make uh, – if a judge makes a finding, you can sometimes get some kind of recourse. But 
it's a very tough position to be in. I mean, there is the when you're the the person who's in the crosshairs because you you know I remember and I've said it before. Ray Donovan, not the TV show, but Ray Donovan, the former, um, I think he was head of Department of Labor. He was indicted back in the 80s, I believe, acquitted, came out into the courthouse steps in Washington, D.C. and said, where do I go to get my reputation back? Right. Uh, he famously said after a couple of drinks that night, OK, where do I go and who's going to reimburse me for all these goddamn legal fees? You know? Right. So uh, it's a it's a it's it's the, it's one of the problems with the system, with the way the system is set up. So um, what can we expect? And I think the Uber ride stuff, I think that Prop that, 22, that, that passed. One, that one passed. Yep. So that was a very smart campaign. That one passed overwhelmingly. Yeah, yeah. It very passed, smart like, campaign. Let Uber drivers Correct. just be. Uber right. will live on in California. Right, because I, I remember a lot of people who normally would be on the other side of that didn't want, don't take away my Uber, don't take away my Lyft. Was Uber – you think Uber would just go away in California? If they would have had to, yeah. yeah. I mean it, it, it's just not in their business model to be able to provide the kind of – This know. is kind of – my feeling was is look, they made, they, they made billions based on basically – um, not having to be played in the same kind of sandbox that uh, the taxis did, and but the model is uh, you know the model is entrenched, and in spite I mean they did this proposition in the face of three or four court decisions recently. I mean uh, saying that they had to classify them as employees, so they took it and they just kind of flipped the script. And they had – I don't know how many of the ads you saw, but it was somebody – I saw a lot. I, I, right. I, I want to earn my money. I don't want to be tied down. You know, give me it's my still, freedom. It's uh, still – I like ad season. I like, uh, I like when, they're, when they do the prop season because my favorite commercial – I like commercials where the woman – in real life, there's no version of this actual individual. Like, I was, I don't know, there's two commercials that make me go nuts. There's some commercial for like a rain gutter block system, a, you know, screen that goes over the top of the gutter so the leaves don't fill it up. And the, in the commercial, the guy who represents the company is doing like a little symposium. And the symposium has about 50 people, couples, you know. And uh, attractive women married to attractive older guys, you know. And they go, all right, who here cleans out their own gutters? And out of the 25 chicks were there, like 19 of them, hands go flying up. Like, I've never met a woman who's cleaned a, a gutter, not who looked like that. But my favorite woman is the prop woman. She's the one who's sitting at the breakfast table. She's good looking, but she's not all done up to the nines. You know, this is morning. And uh, she's looking at the prop, you know, 26, and her husband comes into the co- into the kitchen and she says, have you read the fine print on prop 26? Um, I, I say that woman doesn't exist. I've never seen a hot woman <laughs> who read the fine print in her kitchen and then wanted to share the news with her husband. I propose that woman has never been yeah, born. You think that's a unicorn? I think that's a unicorn. But... Uh, you know, here's the thing. So and wait, I, I want to yeah. turn on you. What if I, I'm going back to the question you asked me? What do you What do you think's going to happen here? Play it out. Play it out with uh, Gaston, or play it Trump. out with Garcetti, or Trump. Trump? Oh, I, I think I think Trump will try a bunch of shit, but I just don't see any any path to this. Yeah, I, I think I, the I, I tend to agree. I think if he had if it had just been Pennsylvania. He had an argument, and he might have he might have gotten some traction, but uh, I, I don't see how it works. What do can you think I take it a step further? I agree with you, Adam, that there's probably no path, and that he's going to try a bunch of legal shit. What's Trump doing come March? Mm, I'm I'm I think he's going to have his own media company. I agree. That, that's that's what I would say, and set up his son for a potential run. Yeah, I think Don Jr. is being molded by Kimberly. Oh, and, yeah. Oh, right? in, in, look, I've spoke to Don Jr. on multiple occasions. He's a sharp guy. He's, he's he, he knows how to talk. He's he's no dummy, and he, <clears throat> you know, you, you see little 
you know, four minute blips of him uh, on, you know, Hannity or something. And he comes across as a real partisan, whatever. But you can have a conversation with him like he he will go back and forth. He'll he'll see other sides of the issue like <clears throat> there's a side to him that you, you're not going to see on Fox News, but there's a side to him that's pretty approachable, sort of human, nice, you know, like he's a regular guy. I know he, every, everything in the Trump administration is a, a caricature, but I would not <clears throat> underestimate him. I wouldn't underestimate Kimberly. I mean, I've known, I've known Goofoil since uh, – well before she ever married uh, Gavin and, uh, and divorced Gavin. And, and she's I, been a force of I, nature as long as I've known her. I do want to say this. And I know it sounds I know it sounds dumb, but I think you and I are the same. All I need is a little indicator. Like, you know, I'm like a chick going out on the first date. And if I see the guy waiting in the hall and the, the dog comes up and he kicks the dog, that's not a bubble. There's mm-hmm. no first date. You know, that's all you need to know about a person. I have little snapshots. So I was reading Junior's book before I interviewed him. And in the book, he said he grew up on a construction site. He knows how to drive a skip loader and a backhoe. And he said, like, I know the difference between a sawzall and a skill saw, right? And uh, it sounded like Trumpisms, you know what I mean? Like I'm, you know, and you picture him showing up in a three-piece suit when he's nine, <laughs> or maybe a sailor suit, you know, and you know, having all the work guys get him his lunch or whatever. You don't, you think, oh, that's a lot of regular person talk. That, but you probably never did it when he came in here. Did you give him a, you give I, him a little I, bit of the Gary sitting? I said, I got a, I read in your book. You know what a sawzall, and you know the difference between a skill saw and a sawzall. I'm going to fire it up for you, <laughs> and I want to know. And they and, and we, he identified correctly. He identified correctly, and then which which anyone I could do. I mean, anyone been around, but you would have to be around that world. You know what I mean? He identified it correctly, and then he said, "Well, it doesn't have to be a sawzall because sawzall is a brand name. It's like like Q-tip." It could be a cotton swab. It could be a bayonet saw, a reciprocating saw. And I was like, that's exactly, yes. Then I thought, okay, you only know that if you spend a bunch of time right. on a site. That's not side information, Jeopardy, trivia shit. If you know that Sawzall is a brand name and it's really technically, it's like Makita doesn't make a Sawzall. Makita makes a reciprocating saw. I never. I can assure you, I never knew that. I absolutely, <laughs> never knew that. Never knew it, and I will. I will. By the time this drops, I will have forgotten yes, it as well. You, you shall. I can repeat this story this time next year. But so I'll, I am saying, I repeat it next next week, and I wouldn't remember. He's he's a real guy, and he might have a real path. I there's. I read something somewhere where they. I forget what uh, publication, but that that was kind of the. <clears throat> Goofoil, uh, Kimberly plan was to oh, kind yeah. of make him you, into the heir apparent for the as, Trump name. As someone who lives on the internet a lot more than maybe you guys do on a day to day basis, it, his father has always been heralded as you know a, a master of social media. Don Jr. is five times better at social media. His social media game is, I mean, it's a lot of it is dunking on people and and making jokes and stuff, but he is. Very in tune with the digital generation. Well, also, you have to uh, you have to think about this as well. Well, first off, I I like Dan Crenshaw, the guy with the eye patch. I've interviewed that guy multiple times. Former Navy SEAL. I've actually had a beer with him after after the show. That guy is wildly impressive. But you also have to wonder because I don't know if we knew this so much, you know, with the Obama administration and we had a recession and blah, blah, blah. Biden and Kamala Harris, they're going to fuck up the economy. They're, we're not going to have great a great four years. We're not going to have a robust economy under these guys. I think they're going to fuck it up. And I think if they – we're now going to have a sort of an A and a B. You know, if if – if they fuck the economy up in the next four years, uh, it's going to leave the door wide open to a Trump or a conservative or somebody's going to get in and go, we got to cut regulation, we got to cut taxes. It's very interesting because today, Gary, uh, maybe you could find it, 
Didn't they make the announcement on the unemployment figures? It was that yesterday. Yes, they're but, very low. Yeah, and also the stock market. Whoever made the what they call the five billion dollar whale bet. Have you heard this? No. They, there was somebody who made a, and I assume Did it was an billion? institute. Five billion with a B. Gary can Google it while we're talking. Um, on the stock market going up the day after the election. And I, we had read about it last week. It was kind of the talk of uh, of the business internet, and it was called a whale bet. Did you find it, Gary? Five billion with a B. And man, whoever did that was uh, – talk about uh, what a return on your money because apparently it was based on the um, – uh, options expiring and b- played right perfectly I- into uh, the market timing on it. Who the fuck takes that action? Five billion dollars. And- I I tried to put five grand on Johnny Weir on Dancing with the Stars, <laughs> and the bookie only took twenty five hundred. He's like, I'm not going to take that kind of action. I mean, it's, it's way too much. That's way too much. Yeah, Gary will find it. It's called the Whale Bet. Is that? Uh, did you find it? I'm still looking, yeah. It's, uh... yeah. So then the other thing that's fascinating me today is it's also breaking as we're talking, Adam. Have you um, – Steve Bannon, who's mm-hmm. been indicted by the Southern District of New York and was found on the boat of the – or the yacht of a Chinese fugitive uh, financier who's accused of uh, crimes in China. Uh, Bannon was banned from Twitter yesterday, I believe, for – right? And correct. Yeah. And was banned for talking about he basically said on his podcast that Fauci and Christopher Ray, Dr. Fauci and Chris Ray, who's head of the FBI, um, that if the first thing that Trump should do when he's reelected or since he's been reelected, Bannon was uh, saying that Trump was going to be reelected. The first thing to do is he should fire both of them, and it's too bad you can't do what they used to do in Tudor England, which was, you know, put their heads on a stick and and put them out in front of the village. Yeah. That got him banned for inciting violence. Pike. Put your head on a pike. Pike. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't know. So, my thing with Twitter or banning or whatever speech is if you say they should fire them and then cut their heads off, then. You could probably be taken down. But if you said you should fire them and they should do what they used to do, then you've qualified it. I, you know, I, and by the way, I may disagree with virtually everything that uh, Steve says, although there are some th- areas where there are, there is agreement on, uh, based on his foreign policy. But the, Idea that you could he be, likes Armenians. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> that's all that he's means. anti-Turk. Exactly, <laughs> that's all it <laughs> you, means. You, you exactly. All roads lead through uh, Erdogan. Um, the the interesting thing is, what are you going to do if they come for you and want to ban you when you say, well, historically, the I mean, speaking of Erdogan, I want to talk about. The Turks, Ottoman Turks and the genocide. If I go too far in describing what happened to them uh, in Armenians and what they did to the Armenians, does that expose you to being banned as well? Can you not cite history? I mean, is there a certain where, – where is the limit? And also, um, at a certain point, one of the, the, the legal arguments for not being able to sue – um, is the immunities that are granted by Congress, but that's generally because they're not exercise. They're not what's called. They're an aggregator as opposed to a curator. Well, if they're now curating, doesn't that expose them to liability? I I, I feel like they've been. I, Twitter has been doing way too much sort of shuffling things around, like the the whole COVID thing. Like anybody who's any doctors that said masks aren't effective or any doctors that said hydrochloroquine are uh, – what was it? Hi, on, I screw it up. Hydrochloroquine? I keep screwing that one up. Hydroxy. Hydroxy. Yeah, a whole bunch of doctors said hydroxychloroquine is good. They're like, take that shit down. Like, what the fuck? Why is that I, your job? But by the way, I, it is effective according to a whole shitload of doctors. Why? But the, the, why the, is it only your opinion? Like, well, I don't f- understand. this doctor says no. All right, that doctor says yes. 
Well, yeah, but we got to take it down. Why? Because everything has to be vetted by your doctor? This is a bunch of fucking doctors, too. And by the way, um, hydroxychloroquine, Dr. Drew was sitting where, where you're sitting, said uh, it's he was doing some research on it. He's like, if you're a pregnant woman if, and you're on it and you get pregnant, you don't have to come off it. It's that inert. Like, it's, it's that safe. So, See, what, that's what's, why so what's Drew, Twitter? Can, right. Why is Twitter getting involved and with this? I don't understand this. It's part of um, the conundrum of the First Amendment. Just because you don't like the speech doesn't mean you get to censor the speech. The, there is no – the whole idea of the First Amendment is you're supposed to have a marketplace of ideas. Are some ideas crazy? Yes. But what? Oh. who's the one – isn't it kind of scary at a certain point that you're making decisions as to uh, – and seizing what, what – my professor would have said, seizing the moral high ground and saying, this is true, this is not true. Well, I mean, for, more, I, I will tell you, maybe even a more slippery slope than this is true, this is not true. Adam and slippery slope guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, more is, I have deemed this dangerous. Well, think about how broad that is, what you think is dangerous. You know, what, what, I'll tell you the, the spectrum of who thinks what's dang, dangerous. Evil can evil my mom. <laughs> That's how much room there is between people and actual danger or perceived danger or emotional danger. You're just announcing. And by the way, how fucking convenient is it? Does everyone you disagree with, you go, well, that's dangerous. You know, we can't have that kind of that. We can't have that kind of I mean, the, you know, Washington Post came out that Hunter Biden, you know, laptop thing like that. Was it watching? Post? Sorry. New, New York, New, New York, York Post. Post, New York Post, Hunter. You know, there's like that. Take it down. And when they were grilling these guys in Congress, they were like, well, first off, they just spoke in circles. Like, why did you take down that article? It's like, well, we didn't substantiate. Oh, they said something like, oh, because because the laptop was like seized illegally, whatever, they didn't do it. And of course, whoever's questioning him went, uh, 10 minutes ago, you put up Trump's tax, tax returns. That's illegal. So no problemo. I mean, gee, they, they fucking showed their hand big time well, and they shouldn't have done it. They I just don't understand this. Look, I, I have fought, um, cases, repeatedly have sued on behalf of clients um, on the basis of free speech have defended criminal cases that I believe were brought um, you know generally it's an obstruction case you know that's a if, mm -hmm. if a cop doesn't like your speech they cite you for obstruction um, and said you weren't complying or something like that and I've always found that during an arrest during an arrest right. yeah I mean, they, they, that's a 148 in California uh, at least uh, By the conceivably way, does that work anymore I've, I see women <laughs> screaming at cops like I'll suck your dick if you change your vote <laughs> like I, thank god those are on the internet for that young guy well the what's but it's a it's not a no matter which side of the issue you're on I don't know that anybody wants to live in an America where there is – I mean, yeah, you can have fake news. You can have um, crazy opinions. You can have what you deem to be something that's uttered that is false. But OK, so why isn't that part of discourse? Where is the – why is it well, that – Well, we, don't we live in a place where there's a group called Flat Earthers – Mm -hmm. And then there's another group that thinks uh, there were no Jews in the towers when it came yeah, down. You know, and, the, you know, you got the Turks. I'll bring it back again. <laughs> Turks who were saying that the Armenians were insurrectionists and caused their own genocide. Right. right? So we, we have those groups. We're aware of them. Mm -hmm. We don't participate with them. We have white supremacists and we have Antifa. And we just uh, – It was one of the things that I've always, I've always found a little bit different from us in Europe and – um, is that uh, in Europe you can criminalize speech, um, mm -hmm. and you know Turkey does that once again. They criminalize speech with journalists, and they you know, put journalists in. You know, it's an interesting phenomenon. I I can't be the first person to bring this up, but I haven't really heard it. It's interesting from a sociological standpoint that this country was essentially founded by. Europeans who were fleeing oppression, religious and, and other, came here to open a free society. 
And every year we become more and more like Europe. Mm -hmm. We look at Europe and we go, you know, in Sweden Mm -hmm. they have. And we are essentially – we then sit here and look at them as some sort of model so we can craft our country. And it's like that is the exact opposite reason this this country is here. But it's a very interesting – it's an interesting phenomenon that we're now looking the other direction. We're looking back toward Europe going, how can we be more like this place our ancestors fled? Well, and it's interesting because in the law, at least through the Anglo-Saxon tradition and all of the things that we've imported through the common law and everything else, we pick and choose. I mean, I, I've uh, mentioned for years that you have – kind of the tabloidization, if, for lack of a better term, of the criminal law, you know, criminal trials when they're, when they're kind of supersized. Um, in England, they have that coverage and we the Fox News model, which Murdoch brought to America to in a large degree. But in England, they've got the Contempt of Court Act where they kind of shut down coverage. And so that's one way to try to act as a prophylactic uh, against uh, undue media bias. And we don't have that. So it's almost as if we pick and choose some of the worst aspects. Yeah. And what do you make of that whole uh, Johnny Depp thing going on in well, Europe? I Speak do not understand. I, there must be. I, I wish I knew one of the lawyers involved. But I don't understand. I never understood in real time. In fact, I was doing some punditry for – um, Ashley Banfield on a show of hers, and I said in real time as this was all coming out, I don't understand who convinced him that this was a good idea or there must be some motivation I can't figure out as to why he's doing it because it was a shit show of monumental proportions. And did literally, nobody, right? Literally. Did nobody ever tell him this is not going to go well? I don't, I don't know. I don't know, but you know, I, I do like you when you're – uh, perplexed and you're like why did this person do this and who let them do it i just it's you know you don't have to sit by and let your client commit uh, and the dominoes are already starting to fall he was fired from the warner brothers uh, harry potter spinoffs this morning yeah well, oh this morning yeah yeah, yeah. oh yeah um what it's just well, it's well, a why was he fired i mean i know it's like someone shit the bed and i mean because he did he hit her was my like sympath- abuse? The 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 claim he was trying to fight against was a headline that called him a wife beater, and a court uh-huh. basically went out and went, "No, that's accurate enough." And yeah. at that point, Hollywood's got to sort of do something. And by the way, I, you know, for whatever Rorschach or free association, um, before this trial, I did not, when I thought of Johnny Depp, think wife beater. <laughs> I that was not the first thing I ever thought of. <laughs> <laughs> and now, yeah, when I say Johnny Depp, wife beater, there you, you know, kind of like they Sean Connery, poor Sean Connery. Um, as soon as he died, they started playing the Barbara Walters interview around the internet. Right? It was so precious because she kind of gave him an out. You know what I mean? Right. And she's like, well, "What about that?" And he could have said, "Look, you never do it." But if there's a situation where she's endangering her own life or the life of a child or something, then you have to do it. He was just like, hey, look, sometimes arguing isn't enough. <laughs> I know. And it was just like, wow. I was just, it was well, talk about a different time. Oh, my God. The glory. I mean, a totally different time. The, the First things first, he could have slapped Barbara Walters there, too. <laughs> I mean, he he... He didn't like this bitch asking this question even. It's still, I, oh I don't my know. God. I, Are we going to get, it, now we'll get muzzled or thrown off the podcast it, for it, laughing when Adam makes a joke. It's it's not as, it's still, I don't know. I don't know if it's as good or as bad as the Deacon Jones head slap. Head slap. That is that's an all-timer. The Deacon Jones is an all-timer, but for me, the Sean Connery one's a different level because mm-hmm. she's referring back to an interview he did in like the '60s, where he mm-hmm. could easily have been like, "Well, it's you know a long time, you know, right. everyone's era. thoughts evolve," and he was like, "I stand by it." Yeah, yeah he stands by it. <laughs> All right, let me stand by Tommy. It's one of the reasons why you generally don't want to put your clients on the stand, Tommy John. <laughs> 
I always say push yourself. Seek discomfort. Yes, I was in my cold swimming pool this morning seeking discomfort, but then I got out and I put on my Tommy John's. That's real comfort. Start every morning in Tommy John underwear. It's uh, the most comfortable you'll ever be. And they don't have customers. They have converts. That's what Tommy John has. Once you get on to Tommy John, you don't you don't get off of Tommy John. I, I put on my first pair uh, seven years ago, and that's – that's it. I don't travel it's with anything. I don't leave it's the addictive. house. You basically throw away the rest of your stuff. I can't bring myself to throwing away the Calvin Klein midways because there were like 28 bucks a pop. <laughs> that's, that's as much my dad bought you, you're furniture channeling, for You're that, channeling for that your inner money. armo. Yes. Yeah. All right. Over 96% four-star plus reviews on over 12 million pairs sold. It's the best pair you'll ever wear. Or it's free. Guaranteed. Right, Gary? That's right. Go to TommyJohn.com slash RD for $20 off site-wide. Get $20 off only until November 9th at TommyJohn.com slash RD. TommyJohn.com slash RD. See site for details. Any other uh, Well, I was just going to say, I also just noticed as we were coming in here, did, Bannon's lawyer, Bill Burke, who's a very accomplished uh, uh, white-collar defense lawyer, apparently filed something asking to withdraw from the Southern District case. So not only do you not say pike on a with, head on a pike head on a pike but uh, you can lose your lawyer as well if that's the reason for it his quote bannon's quote if you guys would like to hear yes, it is, is kind of great it uh he said i'd actually like to go back to the old times of tudor england i'd put the heads on pikes right i'd put them at the two corners of the white house as a warning to federal bureaucrats you either get with the program or you're gone hmm now, I like that he's known, positioning them at the corners of the yeah. White House, so that mm-hmm. no matter which way you, you approach right. from. And right. I've known people who have told me every once in a while they just fire an employee to put a head on a pike in the village so that people understand that there's consequences. You know, they, But I guess that that's now uh, we're in an age where you, where you can't go down that road. That That's uh, violence. I see my problem with uh, Twitter and, and a lot of this stuff is – their censorship seems to just go sort of one direction. It heads toward Republicans. It's like my friend Dennis Prager has Prager U, and one of the one of the Prager U five minute videos that was flagged. It wasn't taken down, uh, but it was flagged in that it can't be shown in schools or libraries. It's a parental consent thing. That so, so. First off. Dennis Prager is less than G-rated, and Prager U, uh, the word damn hasn't even been said on Prager U. <laughs> they, flagged a, they flagged a Prager U video on the Ten Commandments, and when they got him in front of uh, Congress to talk about what it was, you know what the answer was? What? Uh, well, it says, thou shalt not kill. Mm. So one of the commandments has the word kill in it. And that's and that's right, but that's not why they did it. Prager use a conservative outfit, and they do that to conservatives. So just fucking say you're doing it. Then it's you, just, you look you look like idiots when you say one of the commandments was not suitable for fourteen year olds. I just I just think it's such a dangerous place to be when you're starting to police ideas well, and speech. Why even what? one of their other banned videos has the hyper controversial title. Do not steal. Right. Oh, is that a Prager you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, wait. But, there was but, another thing today. What it was banned on Facebook. Something about steal this election or steal this. It was uh, stop the steal. Stop the steal. I that I don't understand. Why? But so because it's it's impugning the integrity of the elections, it, which in, is no, it isn't. It's somebody saying stupid stuff, and you. And is, by the way, anyone who spends any time on Facebook knows that a Facebook group is about the most insane place in the world. Uh-huh. So I, we're going to start. <laughs> One of the reasons I stay assiduously away from it. Yeah, yeah. Why? But so we'll get to you know why Johnny Depp this. Why open yourself up to this exposure if you're one of these social media companies like you're really gonna like if someone said well we want to get rid of these prager you videos I'd go, don't don't do that it's gonna make us look like we have a bias like a political bias who cares you know, you know what I, I, mean? I thought that it was a preemptive strike from the threat of antitrust enforcement but that could just be a naive view 
but in, uh, very little of this makes a whole lot of sense. I mean, you know, the there's, for instance, with the TikTok whole situation, there were a lot of people who thought that the reason that the administration had taken aim at TikTok is because of the Oklahoma rally where the TikTok um, uh, it went viral, I guess, for lack of a better term, and there weren't very many people there, and that was enormously embarrassing. That was one theory. And then the TikTok getting thrown to uh, Oracle was uh, a way of um, payback, so to speak, or mm-hmm. uh, by the administration um, and making it uh, American um, or uh, and not Chinese. Um, uh, so you never really know. I don't know how you would discern what the real motivations are and I, whether or not you can do it. It just shows, I think, that we're in an age where the, there is a danger anytime you try to, uh, pol- as I said, police the marketplace. I'll tell you the scariest group of Americans for me. It's not Prager you. It's not the people that are censoring Prager you it's the huge group of Americans who understand that these people are censoring and who agree with it because they disagree with Prager you those are the scary people it's, I say that all the time I I can disagree vehemently with these people but that doesn't mean I want to eliminate it I mean that to me that's because then what god forbid you have a thought that's not au courant then what all right a uh, an int- a thoughtful note to go out on <laughs> uh live acs and stand up that's november 20th and 21st west palm beach improv and uh mark's going to be there we're doing a matinee show of reasonable doubt that it'll be at Saturday, probably about three or four o'clock. Yeah. Uh, so we're doing a live one of those. We did one and had a blast in Utah. So Boy, we're we gonna, sure did. And we'll make sure they got the Don Julio yeah. for you. <laughs> you can go to amcrawler.com for all the live stand up shows. December 12th, Burbank. I'm doing a show. It, it's the Pickwick Bowling Alley. I'm doing like a car show and a stand-up show, really? like an outdoor show. You're going to channel your inner Joe Biden. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's what that's what the uh, Flappers Comedy Club in Burbank is using as their off-site during oh, uh, COVID, okay. so Flappers. Yeah. Uh, AdamCurl.com for tickets, but also on the Flappers website. Hopefully more people show up than a Biden rally. <laughs> <laughs> Those were pretty sparse. <laughs> all right. And uh, you can go to, social you go to our website. Go to uh, check out all the stand-up on our YouTube, youtube.com uh, slash Adam Carolla Mark. We've got Engine Company uh, 28. We're out. Uh, we're outdoors and uh, in music uh, most nights of the week. We've got Tenny, uh, Mediterranean Top House. We're open again downtown. Come down, watch all the boarded uh, retail stores on 7th Street and feel like you're in a different uh, era. Uh, then uh, Capri Southampton still open. V Palm Springs. Come by, say hello. So, till next time, I'm Carl from Mark Garrigo saying mahalo. Thanks for listening to Reasonable Doubt. Tune in next Saturday for an all-new episode.